guys, my name's Tiffany. We're here at First Build today, prototyping a new product. It's gonna be a bee bathhouse. Hopefully it's gonna give bees a nice safe place away from predators, good place to drink, and a great place to nest. We had a lot of ideas before we actually decided and landed on this for a prototype. This is gonna be the part where the bees are actually gonna be nesting. We're gonna have the acrylic walls facing either side so we can see into the nests. We're gonna have some outer protection for the bees so that they're not subject to any kind of bad weather. And finally, we were gonna add a bee bath on top which is gonna give the bees something to drink from. We're gonna cut out the first piece of our bee box here at First Build. So the piece Robbie's gonna be cutting out right now is gonna be where the bees actually live and lay their eggs for the year. It's getting routed out so that we can put a clear wall over it later. This is gonna be drilled out for slightly larger bee species. So it's gonna be things like carpenter bees and mason bees that are gonna live here. And one of the really important things about this is that it's made from untreated wood. The treated woods give the bees a lot of issues with the chemical treatment in the wood. I'm going to let Robbie get started on this and I'm going to go cut out the acrylic. So I'm at the laser cutter. I was having a couple issues with the illustrator file, but I got it working. So we're going to cut out some clear quarter inch acrylic so we can see through it. This is going to encase the sides of the nest and we're going to be able to watch them in their natural habitat. Hopefully when we put it all together, we're not going to have any water leakage issues. So I'm going to go and set the Z axis height so that the laser is cutting into the acrylic the right way. A little rough, but these are going to be our windows. I'm going to go see if Robbie's got the rest of our pieces so we can start the assembly. So Robbie finished up all of our parts on the shop bot. We're going to take it into the makerspace and make something out of it. It looks like our silicone adhesive didn't actually adhere the acrylic to the wood. So I got an idea. We're going to go cut a slot in this with the help of my friend Austin. All right, so we put this quarter inch bit in the router table. We're going to move the fence over, set our distance, and we're going to cut two grooves in this piece of wood. Okay, so this is the top of the bee bathhouse. We're going to flip it over and cut grooves in the bottom of this too. We went ahead and we routed out some slots in the bottom and the back. And now the acrylic needs to be cut a little bit bigger. As you can see, there's a little bit of slop in the sides. So definitely something we want to avoid in the future. For this, it'll do well. So this is all glued in. We're going to give it 30 minutes and then we'll come back. Okay, got it all glued up and it's looking pretty good. I need some feedback from my friends in the bee community, so I'm gonna go talk to them, see what they think. We made our first prototype, and we have started to make our second, but I have my friend Milton here. He's a beekeeper, and he's gonna see if I've got any problems here. So this was our first prototype that we made. We got the bee bath on the top. With this second one, we have succeeded in gluing the wall correctly, and our doors work nice and pretty. So in the winter, these will fill up with all of the eggs and the okay. adult bee will leave. I do like the plexiglass and that you can see the different cavities and, and you know, I've never seen how a mason bee cocoons itself and being able to see through the sidewalls is, is really neat. You know, with my setup, I had to pull out a whole frame of bees. This is a lot safer where you don't have to disturb, disturb the nest and you can still see all that's going on. So that's pretty neat. I, I don't see anything that wouldn't work. Um, I'm a little concerned about the water on the top. If this overflows, you have to make sure it's definitely not going to seep into the nest. Yeah, so on this one, I hadn't thought of that yet, but I did think of that before I made this one. So this one, just like this bevel on the bottom, okay. is going to be on the same on the top and will bevel the whole thing. So if it overflows even slightly, it's going to fall away from the walls. Right. Thank you for inviting me out, and I'm excited to hopefully see this out, out in public someday. Yeah, thank you. So it looks like the next step here is going to be finishing up this second prototype and putting it outside and see if we can get some bees in it. We are here at Cherokee Park at one of their bee conservation spots. And I brought my friend Aaron to help look at his bee nests and compare it to ours and see what he thinks. Um, I research pollination uh, biology, specifically urbanization's effect on pollinators and plants and how they interact. So as such, we set out these nests to take a look at the health of these bees at these different sites, how many eggs are they laying, what kind of food are they using, all sorts of stuff like that. So I'm really excited to be talking about different kind of bee box designs here, and you all seem like you have some really cool stuff to show today. One thing I love the most is that you can actually open this up 
and see what's going on on the inside. See if the bees are healthy, if the nests are active. So that is just the absolute best thing about this. This top part's super cool as well. So hopefully it can be a nice little bee bath, you know, a little watering hole for these insects. One of the ideas that we've taken into consideration but haven't sold ourselves on yet is the idea of adding a camera in so you could uh. view the bees through that wall. I do love that idea. So some people might be a little scared to interact with these nests and open up. You shouldn't be, but I totally understand if you are. Um, so that'd be another great way to help people interact with them without having to get too close if they don't want to. So I think that those are super cool ideas. As well. How long do you think it would take for us to actually get some bees nesting? Uh, you know, I would like to say roughly two to four weeks, you should have some nests happening. This is peak bee season. Um, so now's a great time to be putting it out. These don't last forever. Uh, so they, we have to replace this wood every couple of years. So if we had a really cool way of having some sort of large box and then replacing these actual cavities every few years. You can take a piece of pliers and go ahead and pull out your bee cavity and replace it with a new one for the next season. Super cool. I love that. So if you want to set these up in your backyard, it's a great way to get the whole family interacted with conservation, pollination, observe your bees at any time you want. So we got a couple last things to do with the prototype and then we are going to get it set up out here and we are going to come back to you in a couple weeks, hopefully with some bees in our nest. Thanks Aaron for all of your help and thanks for watching. Oh, that's pretty cool. That's really cool. <laughs> <laughs>